Hello there guys and welcome, it is Niran here and today it is time for me to bring you episode number 4 of our Wigan Athletic Road to Glory career mode here on FIFA 16 and today we are finally exiting the transfer window, the summer transfer window and moving into a period where we're going to be playing a lot of games per episode. You're going to be seeing 5 games in today's episode in some form or another. 3 will be simmed and 2 will be played and of course as I just mentioned you'll be seeing transfer deadline day and uh, all 10 hours of it. I don't know why it's 10 hours, I don't know why it's not 24 hours, but d d don't ask me that, I'm not the one who, uh, who makes these things. Nevertheless, talking about transfer activity, obviously that's the first thing we've got to get done. Um, I'll show you the games that we'll be playing um, in this episode a little bit later on, but first we're going to get through deadline day. And um, a few episodes back, or an episode ago, I told you that I needed a new striker uh, to go along with Marcus Rashford and Will Grigg, uh, but also a central defensive midfielder, because Sam Morsey is literally the only only defensive midfielder we have in the squad. Tim Chow to some extent is one but realistically we're probably going to need another one either on loan or bought and we're actually going to go ahead and look at John Sutar who is a Hearts defensive midfielder. We made a bid for him. We'll talk about him a little bit later on but moving back to the strikers obviously I left you guys with the vote last time and you guys decided that you wanted me to sign Sander Svensson. Now, the complication here is that Sander Svensson is quite a good player, and unfortunately, a lot of other teams are going in for him. Uh, Yunus Marzouk, uh, Juventus declined our offer. Uh, Mulder are in talks with several other teams, so we're having to make an improved bid for Sander Svensson here of 860,000, and David Kovnatsky is going somewhere as well. And as you can see, uh, Mulder have now received an 875,000 bid from Aberdeen, for, uh, for their striker and you know a, an hour later and Mulder are saying that they've rejected our bid because he's signing for a new team. As you can see Yunus Marzouk, sorry I, I said that um, Juventus actually declined our offer, our transfer offer, they actually accepted it, went ahead and made a contract offer but he then rejected the contract offer and with now only five hours to go it's actually becoming an issue, will we actually sign a striker at all because Sander Svensson's going somewhere else, David Kovnatsky's going somewhere else and Yunus Marzouk doesn't seem as if he wants to sign a contract. Nevertheless, in better news, uh, the Hearts defensive midfielder John Sutar made a 400,000 bid for him, the 63 overall 18-year-old, and uh, Hearts went ahead and accepted that, despite um, sort of sort of suggesting that maybe they wouldn't want to sell their uh, their youngster because he's recently signed for the club. So we go ahead and make a contract offer for him of £1,400 per week and he goes ahead and accepts that straight away. So no real issues in this deal so far. Um, a direct contrast it has to be said in terms of bringing a striker in which is proving very problematic so far. But in terms of the signing of John Sutar, a defensive midfielder from Hearts, it looks all but a done deal. We're going to go ahead and accept him and we're going to sign the Scottish youngster for £400,000 and on a contract of £1,400 per week. There you can see his attributes in the background. 75 sprint speed, 72 acceleration and 72 strength. Decent ball control and dribbling as well as passing, uh, tackling attributes as well. We'll probably train him quite a bit throughout the season along with all the other youngsters that we've signed like Bree, Kapuska, uh, Duland as well. Some of the youngsters that are already at the club like Tim Chow, Max Power, Donovan Daniels and uh, we'll sort of get them in some sort of training regime. Nevertheless, two hours of deadline day to go, and we still haven't heard back about Yunus Marzouk, and I'm starting to get worried, and it's uh, sort of starting a panic buy situation. So we're now aborting, it seems as if, uh, the striker deal. I know you guys voted on it that you said you wanted Sander Spenson, but obviously he's gone somewhere else. Kovnatsky's gone somewhere else. Marzouk doesn't want to sign. We're going to have to make some sort of panic loan bid here. We've looked at Adama, Adamola Luckman, uh, who, who you guys suggested quite a lot in the comment section last time from Charlton, and also Tammy Abraham. Whether we can get those loan deals done is another story. In the background there, you can actually see that David Kovnatsky, one of our targets, actually ended up signing for Gillingham, who were another team in our league. So they beat us to his uh, signature, and time beat us to the signatures of, of any striker. Yunus Marzouk just decided he didn't want to join under any circumstances, and I never heard back in time about Adimola Luckman and Tammy Abraham. So I think we're what we're going to do is we're going to sign Luckman on a uh, on a loan deal in January. But unfortunately, we are now literally left with Marcus Rashford and Will Grigg, uh, which is not ideal. In the background though, you've just seen the calendar and the five games that we'll be, uh, that we'll be playing uh, in today's episode, and also that we've been drawn against Manchester United 
in the third round of the Capital One Cup. That's going to be a massive game. Certainly one that I will be playing. No way I'm simming that one. Uh, and that will be the first game of next time's episode. Nevertheless, it is now time for the first round of the Johnston Paint Trophy. I don't really know the rules of this competition much, but nevertheless, it's not stopping us from taking a 2-0 lead early on against Barnsley at home. Mikel Dooland once again scoring in the Sims. Morgan as well, the captain for Wigan in real life, gets a goal. Dooland gets his second, and Sam Morsey makes it 4-0 in a fairly weakened side. Uh, UC Askelainen was in goal, and it was Borthwick, Jackson, Morgan, Pierce, and James at the back. Morsey, Jacobs, and Kapuska in midfield with Ryan Colclough coming into the side at right mid. He's a young for Wigan in real life. Uh, Rashford came off the bench for Greg, who, who surprisingly sorry, didn't score in that game, but it didn't matter because we won the game 4-0 in a sim thanks to a brace from Mikel Dooland, a goal from Sam Morsey, and a goal from our centre-back, Morgan, as well. Nevertheless, after that fantastic victory in that sim, we're now going ahead and signing a third youth scout. We had quite a lot of money left over, about £1.4 million left in the bank after the transfer window, which is pretty damn decent considering the players we brought in and we only have three and a half million pounds at the start of the career mode and we are getting a Finnish scout there, Pitu Elias, who I think is two star, three star uh, in terms of his scouting, so hopefully he can go out to Norway and bring back some fantastic talent. Uh, nevertheless, some fantastic talent in our squad that won't be available for our next game uh, includes Will Grigg and uh, crucially our goalkeeper Jussi Jaskalainen. Both of those are away on international duty. Jaskalainen with Finland. So Lee Nichols, our backup goalkeeper, is going to have to come into the side and hopefully do the job. And of course, at the other end of the pitch, Marcus Rashford will have to come into the side as well to replace Will Grigg, who's away on international duty. Now, Vilchut and Dooland are the wingers for today. Kapustka, Morsey and Jacobs in midfield. Then Reese James, Pierce, Barnett and Borthwick Jackson at the back in this game against Blackpool in the league. Nevertheless, looking to get off to a bright start. And Bartos Kapustka hits the crossbar with a lovely finesse effort. And this guy who was absolutely amazing last time out there with a lovely effort. And actually a really good effort there from a Blackpool attacker there. They've managed to hit the post as well. So the woodwork at both ends of the pitch has already been struck one time each for each team. But Bartos Kabuska. Wow, he did a really good job there. Nevertheless, down the right-hand side, Yannick Vilchuk's putting the ball into the box. Mikel Doolan finds it at the back post. He controls it and slots the ball into the bottom corner. And that is a lovely goal. And it is the first time we've actually seen Mikel Doolan, our signing from FC Midtjylland, actually score a goal. It's his sixth goal for the club. But five of them have come in sims. This is the first time we've seen one. And nevertheless, we're going forward again right on the edge of half-time. And Bartos Kapuska has hit the crossbar again. This time assisted by a lovely outside-of-the-boot pass from Marcus Rashford over the top. It was a lovely volley from Kapuska, who is so unlucky not to have a goal. And honestly, I'm not entirely sure if I've ever played with a player where the gulf in class in comparison to the rest of the league is so large. Honestly, this guy is so incredibly good. It just doesn't feel as if he's a League One player. Nevertheless, Blackpool have had a, have had a goal disallowed. We've had a chance with Dooland, but Blackpool surely should have equalised with one minute to go. Barnett losing the ball in the box, and Yates somehow spoons the ball over the bar from about literally seven yards out. A guilt edge opportunity for Blackpool to equalise right at the end, but they do not. We take the win. Good ratings for Kapustka and Michael Jacobs. Jacobs who gets man of the match, and a good rating as well for Nichols. In, the, uh, in our goal, who didn't have to do too much overall in terms of saves, but a solid debut and of course a clean sheet as he came into the side to replace Jussi Askelainen who was away with Finland. Nevertheless, moving on from training after some fantastic performances from Doolan, Kapuska and Bree, they are being rewarded with training and Doolan's actually gone up to a 69 overall. Kapuska's on his way to 70 and James Bree is on his way to 61. Nevertheless, you can see the squad there in the background going into the next game of today's episode, the third game out of five in today's episode and it is another simmed game at home against Swindon in League One in the league. As you can see, Will Grigg, though, has given us the lead after just three minutes in this one, after Ormond Otterwill of uh, Swindon actually got injured in the first minute. However, Jin Song Wook of Swindon has equalised in the 26th minute, but Will Grigg, just a minute after half time, has restored our one goal lead, so that's 2 1 again. He's got another brace. The amount of goals him and Doolan 
have scored so far this season is fantastic and just to sew up the victory completely Perkins our central midfielder the 33 year old who's got about 91 stamina he's the one who's just going to run around the pitch like Danny Drinkwater in Leicester career mode he comes off the bench to make it 3-1 and it is yet another victory we are absolutely on fire and now another sim game we're going to get into before playing the final game of today's episode against Coventry but before that we've got another sim game away from home against Oldham again in the league much like the uh, the game against Swindon beforehand and, and of course the game that will follow against Coventry as well. We're in fantastic form though, winning all three of our games so far in this episode. Can we potentially win all five games? Well, as you can see, Mikel Dooland and Will Grigg have scored again to make it 2-0. Uh, Fort though gets one back for Oldham, having missed a penalty earlier on in the game. He then scores one in the 59th minute, but we do hold on to take a 2-1 win thanks to goals from Will Grigg and Mikel Dooland again. That's like, I think Grigg is now into double figures goals-wise already in this series after four episodes. How ridiculous is that? Mikel Doolan now has got seven goals, six of which have come in Sims. And I was saying this to someone who was commenting in the comments section last time. You know, there's a new dynamic now of players who are playing well in games but not necessarily fantastic in Sims, like James Bree, who's because he's quite a low overall. And of course, vice versa as well, like Doolan, who struggled in games but has been fantastic in Sims. Overall though, his performances in Sims are contributing to our fantastic form at the moment. And of course, four wins on the bounce in this episode. I don't know how many it is in the series overall. We'll be looking to try and continue that good form here at home against Coventry. There you can see the squad in the background. Only a few main changes. Sutar in for Morsey. Bree in for um, for Reese James. Borthwick Jackson starts at left back. And uh, there was also Max Power coming into the side as well for Jacobs. And Harris Vuchkic in for Yannick Vilcher. Nevertheless, going through on goal after just eight minutes. Will Grigg and Kapuska combining again. And Will Grigg. I mean, this guy, he's just absolutely astonishing he just finds himself in the best scoring opportunities and he's so clinical unfortunately it was a great save from the Coventry goalkeeper to deny him a sliced shot there from Harris Vuchkic into the second half though now as you can see Sutar there has won the ball of the Coventry defender he passes it to Will Grigg who shoots from outside of the area and what a goal that is from Will Grigg right into the top corner and this guy this guy's a legend already this is Amazing. Him, Dooland and Kapustka are absolutely unstoppable. James Bree, Max Power, Michael Jacobs, Perkins, Vilcher, they're all amazing. Connor McElhenney's come off the bench as well. He's forced a challenge out of the Coventry defender and the referee has given a penalty. And in a month of Sundays, that is not a penalty. The defender's clearly got a touch on the ball. It's unlucky for Coventry, but Will Grigg can now step up and get his second goal of the game and he duly dispatches the penalty and yet again he has scored more than one goal in a game two goals in five minutes has effectively ended this game after Coventry did their best to make it an extremely boring affair nevertheless into the last minute and we probably should have made it three through Tim Chow who came off the bench after the lovely crossing I think from Conor McElhenney on the right hand side who I suppose you can argue really changed the game after coming on, the uh, ex-Everton youth graduate hasn't really featured too much in this series so far, but a good uh, game for him coming off the bench. Will Grigg, though, the best game, of course, uh, getting man of the match. John Sutar as well with a good rating on his debut, of course. The 400k signing from Hearts doing a very good job as a Sam Morsey replacement in that one with a very good rating, it has to be said. Nevertheless, as you can see at the end of today's episode, after five games, four of which were in the uh, the Football League one in the league let's just say that they were in the league uh, as you can see we are now top of the table by one point over peterborough and already after just eight games we're four points clear of um of third place uh, in terms of uh, automatic promotion so uh, it's looking pretty damn good already so far the form is very good as you can see two of our opponents today oldham and swindon find themselves in the relegation zone but our form is really really good already at the start of this series Doolan, kapustka grig 
all the, everyone performing absolutely fantastically and some of the signings that you guys have voted for have performed very very well indeed. Nevertheless I hope you've enjoyed today's episode of Wigan Athletic Road to Glory Career Mode. If you did enjoy feel free to subscribe and of course hit the likes button if you enjoyed this video. Subscribe if you're new around here and uh, if you enjoy the content on this channel and comment about enjoying the video if you enjoyed it that much. But nevertheless it has been a pleasure ranting at you guys today. Have a good day. Enjoy yourselves and goodbye. No, that's not me. Act like a waste man.